Hey, hey, welcome back, everyone, to another broadcast of In the Trenches. I'm your host, Tom Morcus, and today I sit down with Justin Brooke, the founder of AdSkills. And before we get into it, I just want to give a quick update on kind of where I've been at, what I've been up to, and then we'll lead into the conversation. But as you may have noticed, I've taken a break from podcasting over the last few months, really close to a year even. Things have just gotten super busy in the work I do. And the podcast was always something I kind of did on the side because I enjoyed it and I wanted to share interesting stories. And it was a great way for me to connect with really interesting, smart, driven people and learn from them, which I've used and applied in my own life. And so in that regard, mission accomplished. It's done what I needed it to do. And because my podcast was never, say, an income producer as such, I've never, you'll notice I've never run sponsorship ads or anything like that. If anything, I might plug something I'm working on. Uh, But ultimately, there's never been any money made from this podcast directly through advertisements or sponsorships or anything like that. So bottom line is, it became something uh, pretty easy for me and uh, reasonably so to kind of put to the side while I focus on some other things this past year. And um, the good news on that front is that business is going well. We've done a lot of work in the digital and education space. I've been doing a lot of consulting with SaaS companies and software companies and education companies to help them grow their reach, impact, and revenue. And lots of new learnings, basically. And that's really what this podcast has always been about for me is sharing what I've learned or sharing what other people have learned so that you can skip the mistakes, you know, you can skip to the front of the line, so to speak, not have to go through all the pains and challenges and obstacles that I have, or that, you know, say the guest has had that's sharing his or her story with you. So with all that said, I am planning to release a few more podcast episodes this year, sporadically, no real plan as to how consistent I want to make that. But I will be aiming to produce a few more. Some are on pay what you want pricing. I've been coming back to this pricing technique because a lot of people have been asking me about it. I originally wrote the complete guide to pay what you want pricing back in 2013. It was uh, the first book I published after I had left the army and went full time kind of working for myself. And it's been interesting and kind of a wild ride since then. What's, What's happened, what's manifested in my life. And I want to share more about those kind of things in the coming months and days ahead. And if you're interested in that, I'd love to hear from you. You know, an easy way is write a review for this podcast on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever else you're listening to it. Just go ahead and give it a a review and then let me know what you'd like to hear more about. If you'd like more personal updates from me or for me to dive into specific subjects, Again, when I first started this podcast, I felt like I knew nothing and um, I was just there to listen and learn. And I think at this point, I've learned a few things and I've tested and tried them and they work really well. And so if you're you're listening to this and especially been listening for a long time, you want to hear more from me, just let me know. In a review, you can also email me, tom at tommorcus.com. I'd love to hear from you. What do you want to hear from me next? If you'd like to for me to go into the background of the businesses that I'm building right now or some of the client projects where I have liberty to share what we're doing on the marketing and sales front. If you'd like to hear more about how I've done this podcast or or ways that it has actually been financially beneficial for me in the past, or you'd like to know how I write or publish books or how I help clients with their marketing and all these different things. I think there's a lot I now feel comfortable uh, sharing. You know, skip forward, what, seven or eight years since I started this podcast and I've learned quite a bit. I've always been somebody to listen to something and then implement it. So with all these conversations that I've had over the past seven, eight years. And through this podcast, uh, just through the podcast alone, but everybody else who I've connected with on account of the work I do, I've put so many of those things into practice. I've kept the things that worked. I've discarded the things that don't. I've never shied away from experimenting or testing out something I didn't understand. And that's kind of where I'm at now. And that's why I'm coming back out with the complete guide to pay what you want pricing it and update to the book, because I think there's a lot of learning that I've discovered and, and clients have to implementing this. I want to share with you I'm also rolling it out as an NFT, a non-fungible token. If you have no idea what that is, don't worry about it. You can still check it out and follow along in my case study, this kind of real world case study I'm doing right now as we speak. So when this is released, just go sign up for my newsletter at tommorkes.com slash email. That's T-O-M-M-O-R-K-E-S dot com slash email. Sign up to uh, get the updates as I 
go through this experiment in the crypto blockchain NFT world, releasing my first NFT and hint, hint, it's going to have to do with pay what you want pricing. So it's all kind of tied together. I figured it would make a lot of sense for me to uh, not only come back out with a re-release of a product, but maybe do it in a new way. And hence the NFT idea kind of came to me uh, through conversations I had with some people who were in that space. And I thought, you know what, what a great opportunity to maybe share something like this in with the world, not only the updated complete guide to pay which on pricing, but um, an experiment in NFTs, which I think can be interesting for creators, authors, publishers, producers, anybody who does digital stuff online. There's something there, I think, with NFTs, and I'm not sure what it is, and it, who knows? It could could be the next big thing that that goes away in like a year. Who knows the longevity of these things? But coming back to what I said before, I always like to experiment, and I like to share what I've learned through those experiments and through those tests and trials, so that you don't make the same mistakes I did. So if you want to follow along live, go to tommorcus.com/email. If you're listening to this months, years, decades down the line, you can hopefully still find my blog up and and go in at tommorcus.com or find some of the archives that way and go through what I've done in the NFT space. So for now, uh, I think that's enough, and I think we need to now get to the interview with Justin Brooke, where we're gonna dive into his experiments and forays into pay what you want pricing, what he loves about it, and what has worked well, and also what hasn't. And there's a ton to glean from this interview, so I hope you enjoy it, and if you do, please leave a rating review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever else. Oh, Spotify, I think we're on. I think we're on every major platform at this point. So leave a review wherever you find it, and I'd love to hear from you. Thank you in advance for your support. So Justin, uh, I'd like for you to start by just sharing with everybody who's listening. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and and your company, um, AdSkill. Skill. Sure, Excuse me. absolutely, man. And, and glad to be on here. Thank you for having me on. Um, we are a paid traffic training company. You know, we like to think of ourselves kind of like an online school, but we're, we're not a school. There's like legal things that I don't want to get into, but it's like that because we have a certification and we do uh, matchmaking. We help them actually get jobs or actually get clients. So it's, it's not just a course and then you're off on, on your own. It's kind of what separates us. So that's what we do. We've got, you know, everything from Google ads to Facebook ads, TikTok ads, all the different ads. And, um, we try to do it, you know, under a model that's very similar to Skillshare, you know, but it's just instead of all kinds of things, you know, we're not teaching photography or, you know, meditation, you know, we just stick to advertising and marketing. And how long have you been doing this for? I know, I think I came across you a few years ago, but you've been doing it for longer than that, much longer. Yeah, I've been doing this stuff, selling courses. Uh, I think I'm going on my 16th year, actually, December yep. will be my wow. 16th year. Uh, so I've been doing the course thing since before it was cool. And, uh, but ad skills is relatively newish. You know, I think we started in 2015 debatable 2016. Um, it was, it was, wasn't really a thing in 2015. There was like a course we launched it. It did well. And then it started becoming a real business. So. Awesome. Okay. So with that in mind, I want to definitely dive into pay what you want pricing and how you guys have used that, uh, before mm -hmm. I get to that real quick, high level for, for the business side of things. So do you guys, you sell, you do certifications, you kind of do courses as well. What is your typical model for it? Is it like a subscription or is it like a pay, pay one thing at a time? Or how do you guys deliver your, your service and your offers? Yeah. So we do, uh, we tried a bunch of things over the years, but where we've come to in the evolution of everything, uh, especially today when there's like a YouTube about everything and a podcast about everything, uh, we are just eight ninety nine a month. And we have fresh new courses being added, you know, very, very similar to a Skillshare or masterclass. Awesome. Okay. So let's, let's shift directions to pay what you want. That gives people a good overview of kind of where you're coming from, um, which always is good from like a nuanced mm -hmm. perspective of how my pay what you want work. So what I want to start was tell me a little bit about your foray into pay what you want pricing, maybe a little bit of the backstory. So years ago, I was, uh, slinging myself on the internet as an SEO expert back before like the whole, the slaps, the, you know, if anybody remembers, there was like Google Panda and Parakeet and there was all these different slaps. And I was selling a book called SEO lives back then. And we had an SEO service and that was kind of my funnel as I'd get my book in front of people 
and then be like, wow, you wrote a book. I should definitely hire him for SEO. And um, so what I did is I was selling that book for a dollar. This is before I actually had like a print book, you know, an ebook. I didn't like just giving it away for free because then I couldn't really do any upsells. So I was selling it for a dollar and there really wasn't the technology for pay what you want yet. Um, so I was, uh, you know, what I realized is that $1 kind of converts about the same as free, you know? And I was like, everybody goes with free because you can get a lot of leads. I went with a dollar because it converted just as well as free, but I was getting a dollar. So there was that, you know, it was making a, but also I was able to give that dollar away as, uh, you know, I would say hundred percent, you get the front end commission, you get all the dollars. Affiliates love that because all of a sudden, you know, bing, 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 you know, even though they're only making a dollar, they've never seen their inbox blow up with commissions and sales. And so that worked pretty well, but then I could do like the one click upsells. I had the credit card on file. So it let me do a lot of those other things. And that's really why I went with the dollar. Long story short, then pay what you want. Pricing starts coming around. I think the first I saw, I think, I think Joel Osteen did it. And then I think Cards Against Humanities did it. And I think a rock band did it. And I was like, wow, that's really interesting. And so that's when I was like, well, I bet you pay what you want probably converts just as well. In fact, it converted better than the dollar, converted just like free. There's like no uh, friction to it. And so that's, and the greatest part is when I tried it, I was like, well, I'm already charging a dollar. So like pay what you want. I, I can only go up from here, you know, for, for me and my front end and, and it sure enough, yeah, I was averaging about fourteen dollars per sale wow. now with with that, and so it, yeah, that was that was my first foray into it. How I discovered it, why I discovered it, all of that. And what was about that time period? Do you know, like, or do you recall when when that was? This would have been somewhere between two thousand nine and two thousand eleven. Okay. Yeah, awesome. Yep. Okay, great. So. You've been have you been using it since then um, in different ways, and I kind of want to explore those a little bit. Like, how have you used it since then? Yeah, so it did phenomenal. Then nobody would listen to me. They thought I was crazy, and I was like, "Look, guys, I'm not like I didn't invent this stuff. There's other people out here doing it. You know, look at these. You know, it's like I think Nirvana did it, or some big yep. band did it. You know, and, but Radiohead. Still, nope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And still, nobody really wanted to listen. I was like, I, I don't care. I'm tr I'm trying to help y'all. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm fine. Um, so I just kept doing it. And then I think when, when it really caught on, um, was recently, I did this big split test in my space. Anyways, free plus shipping offers are kind of a big thing, you know, free plus shipping book, free plus shipping DVD, free plus shipping jump drive. There's all these different free plus shipping offers. And I was like, you know what? I, I bet I can, you know, and that was kind of like the King offer was the free plus shipping. I was like, I bet I can take down the King with pay what you want. And I was going to run this very public split test. And I was, I was doing it and we were winning. I'll tell the whole story here in a minute, but we were crushing free plus shipping with just standard free plus shipping with pay what you want. Pay what you want was blowing it away because we were earning, you could only earn like 695 unless you're one of those guys who are willing to charge like I don't know. I've seen people charge shipping and handling as high as twenty nine ninety five. I, I don't know how they're getting away with it. That's crazy. You know, what are you really shipping that thing in? Like a diamond box or something? So we were shipping in a normal standard package for six ninety five, and so that, but that was my limit on what I can earn. And I already told you, you know, we'd figured mm -hmm. out, and we could talk about that too, like the little tricks we yeah. did to get to the average fourteen dollar per sale. And so free plus shipping. I'm earning six ninety five, and most of that, like six seventy two, was actual out the door packaging postage. Pay what you want. I'm earning fourteen dollars. Mm. So, yeah. you know, same thing going at each other. Pay what you want was winning, and then I added something to free plus shipping that ended up beating it. But I still am a huge fan of pay what you want. Well, if you don't mind, maybe we just jump right into that. So, tell me a little bit about this with this experiment, because obviously, one of the reasons I love what you do is. You, you are so um, transparent about your experiments, which I love. And, um, and I love that you did the split test so publicly. So you were doing, so you obviously pay what you want was working for a minute. Then you did something different to the free plus shipping. So what was it that, that then Trump yeah. pay what you want? So it was actually about our fourth round. And I thought I had really won here. In fact, 
you know, when I was uploading and stuff, there was a big conference going on and they were talking about my split test at the conference. And, uh, but then I ended up having to announce and I told the guy at the conference, I was like, dude, I love that you like showed my stuff. And I, I, I'm so flattered, but I got to tell you, like my next post is going to really ruin it. And I just want you to know ahead of time that I'm going to make both of us look like fools here in a minute. Um, so even though, like, I just want to make sure everybody realizes, even though this split test ended up winning, I'm still a huge fan of pay what you want. I think it should be used way more than it's being used. And this was a very circumstantial thing in the split test. Yeah. So, um, you know, head to head, it was winning upsells. It was winning. And then somebody told me, Hey, why don't you try a bump sell on your cart? Now, for anybody that doesn't know what that is, so everybody kind of knows what an upsell, right? Um, you want fries with that kind of thing, you know? Um, but a bump sell is on your actual shopping cart. Lately, the new technology allows you to add like a little checkbox and it adds something else to the order. When we did that, it, it ended up taking off. And I think the reason why is to pay what you want they were putting in what their value, $20, $40, $5, whatever. And so they were more reluctant to add something else where the free plus shipping, maybe I, I don't know. You never know really why the customers did it. I, I'm, this is my opinion. I think the perceived that they were free plus shipping and that they were just adding on another. So we added the audiobook version. That's what we were selling. You're selling a book, pay what you want. And so we added the audio book as the bump sell. And just when we did the bump sell, free plus shipping ended up winning. It, it, the earnings per sale were higher, and I ended up going with that. And that's still what we use today. I still think there's a there's a you, for social media, especially for selling via social media. This was via paid ads, and I have to very I have to be very careful of my yeah. costs versus my earnings. I don't have the you know, but social media pay what you want. Just hands down, it's so. It's so like giving and so frictionless and so like, eh, pay whatever you want, you know? Yeah. So that's the story. Do you recall um, what the price point was for the bump offer in this ca capacity? And did you run the same bump offer and the pay what you want one as well? I did. It, you okay. know, it was, it was, you know, tip yep. for tat, split yep. tests, uh, try to be as scientific as I can. Right. I mean, I'm not a scientist, uh, but it was uh, $9.99. <clears throat> was what we were doing the bump sell for, for the audio version of the book. And then there was a 149 upsell after that. So we had already had the 149 upsell. And so the round one was just head to head. Then we added the 149 upsell, pay what you want, still winning. Then we did the bump sells to both of them. And that was when free plus shipping ended up taking off the, the cost mm. and earnings and ads. It, it was too good. And I had to stop and I hated stopping because I still, I, I do. I love pay what you want. Interesting. So even though the pay what you want offer that you made um, was still pay what you want and had the bump offer at what, like 10 bucks then basically. Is that right? Yeah. You know, somehow that just didn't click. It was something well, about... Yeah. What happened is, is it was like when those free plus shipping people hit the bump offer, they even started taking the upsell even more. It was like, I don't know. It was like, yeah. well, I'm already in. I might as well go all the way. I don't know what happened, but I just know in the stats it was like, yeah. you know, just when all you have is the stats to look at, it felt yeah. like they were like, oh, well, my credit card's already out anyways. I might as well just buy it all, you know? Right. And so that's that's what, it, that what happened and why it took off. Did you do experiments? This is kind of tangential, but I'm just curious. Did you do experiments on the upsell at different price ranges as well? Like you said, it was like 150 on the back end, I think, or, or, or around about. The only, other, the only other test we've done and... You know, because it's worked, you know, it worked yeah. tremendously well. Um, the only other test we've done is my marketing director. When he came in, he said we could just raise our prices and nothing would happen. And I was like, all right, well, let's split test it. And sure enough, he bumped the he put the the uh, the bump sell up to nineteen ninety nine for the audio book, yep. and then he put the upsell from one forty nine to two forty nine. And he said he felt that the products were still worth that level. There's plenty of you know, audiobooks sell for $19.99. And so he did that. Zero loss in conversions, just made more money. And it was already working. So I haven't split this at anything else because it was like, it was yeah. already working. And then I made more money. And I was like, right, I'm good. Don't touch it. You know, <laughs> it's fine. Now, I also ran into you guys at, this is, feels so long ago, like a different uh, lifetime. 
think it was Traffic Conversion Summit a few years back. Okay. And you guys yeah. were selling, uh, you, were, you had to pay what you want offer. You had like a meetup, right? And you guys were mm-hmm. selling something like pay what you want. Um, how did that go? I'm just curious because I remember I came, I was like, oh, pay what you want. I got, I, I'm going to, you know, I, I, I've, I've done this all the time. I love to support this. So I was like, I, I know I support it. I think I got one of your courses. Um, how did that all go? I was just curious if so, you can recall. I know that was a while ago. So pay what you want is like my secret weapon. I, you know, I love it. Uh, I love that you're talking about it more. You know, your blog post, when I first ran into that, that was amazing. I started linking because I'm so tired of answering questions about it. You know, I just think the same ones over and over again. Um, And so what I love about pay what you want is that it is just, it's so it's so ninja. It's so sneaky. You know, there's no friction to it at all. You don't at all look like a salesman or whatever. And so here I am at a conference and all my best customers are swarming around me. Right. And, uh, I said, okay, here's what I did guys. I rented out a coffee shop because I know that you would have to go at this event. You, you've been traffic and conversion. So the Starbucks line yep. is, is nuts, you know? So I said, well, here's what I did. I rented a, a coffee shop. I rented it out. You know, we have the whole hour to ourselves, um, rented out the coffee shop. Anybody who shows, you have to be a customer to show up, but no worries. You can pay whatever you want. And so that way I could get everybody in for their coffee fix, get them as a customer, and then be able to upsell them afterwards and have these leads and stuff like that. So that was kind of what I was doing with that thing. Had you ever done that before? What was that like? Never. never. Okay. I was just like, I think this will work. You know, I mean, coffee, pay what you want. Yeah. How could it not work with internet marketing? What was, and I don't know. I mean, I know this is a, a minute ago. Um, so I'm not looking for specifics per se and that, you know, the numbers, but how did it go for you overall? Like, what was your, what's your take on it? Like, as, as far as like running a, like a little event like that, especially like in the mid, midst of like a bigger event, like what, what was your, what's your, we, we had like 50, we had like 50 people. We, we, uh, we had awesome. more than the coffee shop could handle. People had to wait outside and then they were bringing like carafts outside for people to fill stuff up. And uh, in fact, it was so much that they didn't want to do the deal with us anymore, which I think is crazy. I was like, I completely filled your store. You had lines, you know, and they were like, yeah, but that was, that's too much for us. We can't handle that. Wow. Interesting. Okay. So, and then for you guys, bottom line, it was uh, still profitable event. Oh yeah. Cause we, after we went home, we followed up with yep. those people and we sold them yep. you know, our courses and stuff like that. Yeah. And then was just it- the picture, the pictures, you yep. know, I'm still, you know, using those pictures today in my marketing because, you know, I have this, uh, I have a picture of all of us standing together and, you know, it's, yep. it's a wide panorama shot and it says we are ad skills. And that photo has made me, I don't know, tens of thousands just in the marketing and everything. So that's so awesome. That's such a brilliant idea. I mean, now that I think some people are running events again and doing that kind of stuff. It's like a good like side note for anybody listening to this. Like I personally want to try something like that, but uh, I just love it. Yeah. It's a great idea. Yeah. So it cost us like, uh, I think it was like 1500 to rent out the yeah. coffee shop, you know? So it was a little bit of a bet, you know, yep. I didn't make my money back right away. Uh, but my business can afford that. You know, I looked at it as a, like an ad spend type of thing. And, you know, literally the, the photos, the relationships, the stories, the upsells, yeah it ended up being worth it. So I implore so cool. people to try it. Awesome. So what's your, what's your philosophy behind offering items is pay what you want. You've mentioned a couple of things kind of in passing. It's like super easy. It's low friction, but like, as far as you're concerned, your ethos or your philosophy, what is it when it comes to pay what you want? So the mistake I see people doing is they're offering like their, their keystone courses or like their main pro- That's not what this is for. I have heard some stories of people being able to do that. I think I heard a story of like a pay what you want car. That's risky. You know, mm. uh, you, you way too much to lose there. It's for me, it's kind of like the things that you probably would have, you know, I hate to say it. It's not the things you would have given away for free, but the things that you would, they are valuable, but you would have given them away for free as a kind of a cost per acquisition, you know? So I'm not That's saying, take free junk and charge pay. I'm not saying that at all. Yeah. I'm saying it's, it's the front ends. It's the acquisition tools that we would use, use those as pay what you want. Um, you know, your PDFs, your 30 minute courses, 
your 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 checklist, you know, the things that most people would just put in free opt-in. Take those things, put a pay what you want, it's gonna convert the same way, but now you're gonna make money. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, I like that as as thinking about it, the cost of acquisition, that piece, like if you were if you would use it in your funnel in a way, or like as like a tripwire or something like that, or early front end. Um, mm-hmm. and especially again, then that lends itself because I started using it. Well, I was just scared of uh, putting my work out there, like even a digital product and nobody buying. I was like, that will hurt my ego more right. than anything else. I was like, I have to protect my ego. So I made, made it pay what you want in the beginning. Because I was like, well, I'd rather just give it away for free, but I'd like to maybe make something. So mm-hmm. I started it that way. And I realized it was really good for eBooks, like mm-hmm. really good yes. for the eBooks I was publishing. Um, it really started a conversation with people when I was really small and didn't have much of a following at all. Um, so I think you can still generate that kind of buzz from it too, because simply put, there still aren't a lot of people who are doing this. Yeah. It, you know, so many people ask me, well, how do I don't have any testimonials? How do I get a pay what you want? Take your product, put it, pay what you want for a week. And you're going to get some money back out of it. And then you're going to get those people who are going to give you great testimonials. They're all going to be happy customers. They paid what they wanted. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So that is just a great, there's so many good uses of, of pay what you want. Social media, it's amazing. Acquisition, it's amazing. Uh, getting testimonials. There's so many things it's good for. Have you ever thought about or um, looked at the side of like, because um, it sounds like when you ran these experiments, they, they went pretty well. Um, and so maybe you didn't even really look into this, but like, did you ever find that in some cases, some people or at certain times, you'd find a lot of people taking the thing for free versus contributing anything or, 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 or contributing the lowest amount. And then in that capacity, is there anything you did to say, incentivize a higher um, contribution? I'm glad you brought this up. I was thinking in my head, there's this one point that I really want to make, and this is it. Um, So if you don't do a certain thing, they will all pay a dollar, you know, mostly they, you know, so you have to give them some frame of reference of what the value is. You know, so we always put some sort of suggested price. Some carts will actually let you put the number in there, but it's kind of faded out. You know, if you can do that, that works really good. Otherwise, just somewhere around there, because we've done this um, with with charities, you know, people that are doing fundraising, you know, um, we've helped them do that. When they, just whenever I've seen it, um, if you don't put any kind of suggested value, suggested number, they're going to put a dollar in. Because yep. if I'm allowed to make my own price and I have no frame of reference, I'm going to put a dollar in there, you know. But yeah. if I see that the suggested value is forty eight dollars, and that's where I like to go, I like to go around, you know, twenty nine, forty eight dollars, and uh, and, and I find people often, I see much more like fives and twenties than I see the ones. There's always the ones, and that's okay because. Yep. You should never be using this on something where you're not okay with the ones. But then every once in a while, like I've had a 200, you know, yep. and the guy was like, you know, I just, I've been reading your posts for so long and I like them and I just, I just wanted to give back to you. I was like, cool. I love you. Thanks. Yep. Great. Uh, you just skewed my numbers way up. So yep. um, yeah, we find, you know, anything in between there. But when you add that little suggested value, that is when it really starts to click. I, I've I've thought about that a lot too, and one of the things I, I think it is is because if there's no frame of reference, it's like nobody feel nobody wants to feel like a sucker, you know. Mm-hmm. And so if there's no frame of reference, you kind of set somebody up to feel like a sucker, like if they give too much. But when you give a frame of reference, then they can say, "Oh, I can be like everybody else here. I can be, um, I can, I can contribute um, a reasonable amount, or I can be really generous because I still have a frame of reference." Like you kind of, yeah. by having the frame of reference, you give them an indicator of what generous really is. You right. see what I'm it, saying? It allows them to be the, it, internally, they can be like, oh, yes. I'm not going to be the jerk that only puts a dollar. I, I put five, I put 20, you know, yep. and they feel better about yep. it. So. Yep, exactly. Awesome. Um, How, I don't know if you can disclose this, but what would you say, like, how much have you, would you say you've earned uh, using pay what you want? I don't know if you can disclose those numbers. That might be, and that might be so broad. It's tough to tough indicator. I haven't um, counted, and I don't yeah. want to overcount for any right. IRS people that might watch. Right. You know, but easily in the tens of thousands for sure. Awesome. And yeah. um, and then when you were doing those, did you always do it with a, like a one dollar minimum price point, or would you do zero dollar minimum price point for some things? Well, always uh, our minimum is always one dollar. 
because uh, yep. we we need that dollar for the carts and things like that. Um, yep. I have experimented with putting it up and it just drops the conversions. You know, yep. Uh, yep. I, I want that that high conversion rate of almost being like free. Um, when I've bumped it up to like minimum five, minimum seven, minimum 10, you know, it just is bombed completely. Yep. Yep. I get that question a lot too. Like, well, could I set like a, a higher minimum? And I feel like, well, there's a certain, there's definitely um, diminishing returns clearly. As, you know, again, mm-hmm. anytime you experiment, you'll see it. Um, also, it starts to beat the point a little bit. So it's like, right. yeah, I like, but what I have had people ask is like zero versus $1. So I've done stuff with some of my eBooks where I've, I've had it at zero. Um, and I do get a lot, a decent amount, maybe like 20 to 50, somewhere in the 20 to 50% on any given period of time that will take it for the minimum or the zero or whatever mm-hmm. is usually the case. But I like the idea of having at least the $1 minimum. I think that's mm-hmm. a good, good baseline for a lot of people to kind of build something off of. $1, it's not much. Almost anybody can afford it. If they're looking at your website right now, chances are they can, you know, they can put a yeah. dollar in to get what they want. Um, and, if, and if you're upset or angry that they're paying a dollar for it, you're probably using the wrong product. You know, use yeah. something that you would feel okay with that. Don't yeah. beat yourself up. Exactly, right? Exactly. Um, and then how about this? Like, how has pay what you want to change your business, career, or life? Like, was it was it a profound change at all? Or was it just like, oh, this is really cool. I could use this a lot. Or did it, did it shift anything else for you? Well, the whole thing of the, the $1, um, yeah. you know, and the, and the pay what you want, which was the evolution of the $1 is just my, I've, I've become an expert at acquisition, you know, it's, it's like yeah. my specialty, you know, when, um, for many years I kind of scoffed at the recurring revenue people because I was like, you know, my favorite recurring revenue is just getting lots of sales a day, you know, and, and I have that ability. Well, you know, 16 years uh, of doing that, I'm a little tired of, of hunting for my meals over and over and over again. And so while I do have the skill and pay what you want is you know done extremely well for me, I'm now on the recurring revenue plan. And I now see that some of the recurring, um, some of the cards let you do pay what you want recurring, which that's super cool. Oh, that's cool. awesome. I haven't, I haven't tried that yet, but that is something I'm, you know, when I get the time, that is something I really yeah, want to try. That's excellent. Um, is there anything, and I know you share a couple of these things. Is there anything that you've learned about pay what you want pricing that you wish you had known before you started? Uh Boy, I wish I would have known the suggested value trick first. Yeah. I sold quite a few, uh, probably a few thousand customers, you know, basically like dollar, three dollars, um, then learn that trick. Um, you know, I, for, for me, it's just I started so early that the technology wasn't there. I'm so yeah. jealous of everybody else listening to this right now. There's like so many carts that do this. And yeah. You can do it recurring and uh, it's got the built in suggested price. So no, I don't. I don't really have any gripes. You know, the only thing I would gripe about is I just wish I would have known the suggested price thing earlier. Yeah, for sure. And then, how about for you? Was there what was the biggest surprise uh, with Pay What You Want when you did implement it? Obviously, I mean, there's a surprise in terms of the AB split test when you first did it that it was a, a clear winner. Mm-hmm. Um, and did was there anything else that has since surprised you about Pay What You Want pricing or anything like that? I'm still surprised at. <clears throat> how many people, everybody I talk to, to, they're so fear-minded. They're like, oh, everybody's only going to give me a dollar. Every time I do this, I am blown away with the generosity of people. It just reminds me that they're really, you know, we hear about all the, especially today, yeah, you know, we hear exactly. about all the rah, rah, rah stuff out there in the world. And it's just, it's nice to be reminded that like, there still are some good people out there, yes. you know, like so many 50s, 75s, you know, 60s, 49s, you know, people that just really honestly put a fair value on the product. And that's, that's just so cool to see every time. And I don't, anybody who ever sees any of my, I don't think you're a jerk for paying $1. I put it up there so that you could pay $1. You're, you're completely fine to pay $1, but I like more too sometimes. Right. Of course. Um, that's awesome. Anything else that you think uh, is worth leaving people with who's li- who are listening to this, who are experimenting with pay what you want, or curious about experimenting, or starting it, or testing it out? Anything else? Any other words to leave them with? Push your fears aside and do it. I promise you, you will be delighted. You will be surprised. You will be converted. You will be like me, all of a sudden on some video somewhere telling everybody else to try it out. It it, it works. It's good and it's great. And and, and it really today in the Instagram, TikTok, you know, world, pay what you want is like the ultimate way to sell stuff on those channels. 
That's such great advice, Justin. Awesome. Where can people reach out to find you, connect with you, or learn more about you? I'm on all the socials, mostly Facebook. That's kind of like my home. Uh, you know, search Justin Brooker Ad Skills. You'll find my stuff. We got some free stuff on YouTube too, if you want to try that out first. Awesome. We'll make sure we link that up and send people your way. Thank you, Justin, for being here with us today. I really appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me. And that wraps up another broadcast of In the Trenches. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a rating review. Just go to tomworkus.com slash iTunes, and that'll take you to iTunes where you can leave a five-star rating review. And that really helps spread the word about this podcast. And finally, if you need help growing your online business or generating new traffic leads and sales at a profit, reach out to me at tom at tomworkus.com or head over to the website tomworkus.com and sign up for the free newsletter.